Okay, welcome back. I'm very comfortable with the process that I just went through. It seemed very straightforward. Following this guide, I'm going to just follow this guide again, except with my production discs. So, first step, uh, if I was to go back to remember, is to make sure that we flash the USB drive. So I'm going to reload Rufus and open up that same image. It's the same USB stick, it just now that it actually has a built image on it, I just want to start fresh. So this image start yes okay it is writing close that okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that out I'm going to turn on my uh, Xpenology box it should boot into the tiny core red pill bootloader and I have to change the IP and do those couple steps I'm not going to show that this time but the next screen will be uh, ready to submit these commands One other item very quickly before I do that is I, I just want to log into the 623 NAS to make sure that everything comes up properly. If it does not, then I'm in a world of hurt. So everything should be on the old 623 install. There we go. Sign in. Fingers crossed. Disk station is working well. If I go to storage manager. Well, that's interesting. The disk that I removed the last time I booted up isn't even showing as like crashed. Okay. Surprised it's not, but everything looks good. All I care about is this. This is my production data. Wonderful. Okay, so now I'm going to shut down and switch USB drives and then boot back up. Okay, and we're back. So let's the 245 is up and running. So control C on that. Let's jump over to Putty. So login as I think it was what TC and password P. There we go. And I. Pr I probably don't have to do these update everything looks good there full upgrade this did download some addi additional files save that I can skip this because I already know what I'm going to use and these are incorrect so let's do this one next update please thank you I can take this as is, update that, because that is what I'm going to be using. Yes, that's perfect. Do the SATA map. Now I have everything plugged in, right? We only saw one drive before. If everything's right, I should see six drives, four hard drives, plus two uh, cache drives. There we go, eight ports, six drives. That looks good. My M.2 is still empty, so that's perfect. Yes. Wonderful. Keep going. Manual review. I could just do a quick cat on that user config. We should see. Yep. 42951. That looks good. Now back to here. We can do build the loader. So we can do RP build. And we are going to be building dot slash rp uh, let's just do a clear clean this up a little bit okay so we have our builds here so we'll do a up in the rp loader dot sh build and i did use the newest one um that's it hit enter 
We got those same errors last time. I'm, I'm pretty sure those are, are those are the extensions. There we go. Okay. Now for the fun part. Um, again, I'm not going to back it up. Um, that could have been why I was getting corrupt, corruption errors and all kinds of other random errors last time. Um, again, I don't see much of a, a use case to back it up. But what I am going to do is a reboot. And we are going to launch into 711 um, on production data. Fingers crossed. Exit check.sh reboot. Yep. Hit enter. Okay. Now what we're going to do is that should beep here in a second. I'm going to jump over to... Oops. Jump over to Synology Assistant. There's the beep. Let's see. I'm just going to switch over real quick my HDMI. Excuse me. So yeah, USB is perfect. It, I didn't have to hit enter. It actually did it by itself. 711-42962 beta. Starting kernel with USB boot. That's wonderful. I'm done here. There's nothing else to see. Now it's all via web interface. So I can go back to my computer. I can do a search. Nothing yet. It should be that 245 IP address. So if I do a quick ping. Minus T. So yeah, it, it's up. So that's that's good. That makes me happy. It didn't find it because it wasn't up yet. So now if I hit search, it should find it immediately. Yep, there we go. Migratable. Good. Model DS3622XS Plus. Good. So I, if I click connect. Accept. It is loading. All good. Welcome back. Okay. So now I can close this. Um, I can make this full screen. Let's I what device info says. Just the okay, IP address, migratable. That's awesome. Let's migrate. Retain system config. Yes. Click next. Upload the pat file again. We're going to be doing the the newest one. Four or um, sorry, not the newest newest, but four two nine six two pat. Broadwell is what it was at nine. Uh, it was 42962 update 4. We're going to be on update 1. So going back to Synology Web Assistant, we're going to do the uh, 42962, 360 megs. Yep. Click next. It jumped to 55 last time, and then it started creeping 56, 57, 58. So if everything goes the same, fingers crossed, we should see... And then here's where it crashed last time. Come on, 56. Yay! Okay. So same thing. Let's jump over to the ping window. It should keep the same IP. There we go. So it is now rebooted. We should hear the beep shortly. There we go. There's the beep. And it took about 30 seconds, so right around 9 minutes it should start to ping again. And that's when we can bring up the web interface. Hmm. I'm not worried yet. I'm just going to click over. Let's see if... Uh, see what it's doing. Yep, starting kernel with USB boot, so that's good. Now... If it actually kept my previous settings, that's a big if. If it did, the IP should be 1.2. Oh, see, look at that. I said something. So it did not keep my previous settings, which is okay. So it's 1.245. So it, around 8 minutes. Um, this does depend on how many uh, packages you have that need to be updated, is what I was reading. 
So let's refresh that. I do want to leave this site. So it's getting ready. While this is updating. If I missed anything, if anybody has any questions, I will go back and edit this video. I will update things. I can change things. Um, I, I recorded this in March of 2023. Things may change. Please let me know. Leave a comment. I'm hoping this was helpful. Uh, give you at least some confidence of how to do it and, and, and watch it all. Again, if I miss something, maybe it was completely obvious to me and was not obvious to you, ask a question. I am uh, I am more than willing to answer any questions or even change this video to address your questions or create another video. See, this is taking quite a bit longer than uh, than the last boot, right? If if you recall, it it like flew through. I think there was twelve applications that it had to update. Um, this is taking quite a bit longer. Okay, I had to take a little break to take a shower and get ready uh, for my day but uh, I came back and I hit refresh it was still starting to update packages with this little window here or this sorry this little uh, little dots and I this popped up sign into DSM now so let's see where that takes us um, okay uh oh Well, so yeah, it's been about an hour. Um, system is getting ready. Please log in later. Hmm. Well, that was interesting. I did a hard reboot. I spent about 15 minutes trying to reboot it via CLI. I was getting no response. So I just did a hard reset with the button on the on the computer. Uh, and it looks like it came right up so far. New server update. You have to see the same one. Notify me. Okay. No, I do not want a quick tour. Okay. Yep, was shut down improperly. I knew that. It's being updated. Let's move this over here. Let's see how this looks good. Yeah. Everything looks to be in order, so that's good. How about packages? So yeah, interesting. Usually this would have all updated or at least it updated all automatically for me previously uh, when I had the new t two terabyte test drive in. And it seemed like something got stuck on this in this update. Let's do an update all here. So it looks like Docker updated. Glacier backup. Now, I was thinking when I launched Glacier Backup last time, there was nothing there. Like I, I said, it lost my job. There was nothing stored uh, on that 2 terabyte hard drive, right? Everything has been stored on these four, on this, this volume, like with these four hard drives. So I guess it makes sense why I didn't have any data. Um, but let's see. Let's try to launch one of these. Hyper backup, yeah, so that that's there. Yeah, and we're online. 317 is the last backup. Looks like Glacier backup still chugging along. Let's repair photo station. Well, there we go. Looks like everything updated. I'm gonna uninstall this PHP. I assume it's it's linking to um, to photo uh, Photo Center, I think it's called. Um, at least it said it was. But once I installed the new version, 
it looks like there is no link there. So let's see what's installed here. Yeah, everything looks good. I don't like how Glacier Backup is still not happy. Looks like Synology Photos is doing something, so we will wait. Let's do a quick reboot on this guy. Okay, we are now on our last reboot. I was having some uh, weird issues with Glacier Backup, so I've rebooted. Uh, I just clicked in. Let's check out Info Center. Xeon 3.6, 6 core. So it's 6 cores, but 12 threads, 32 gigs of RAM. But everything looks great. Glacier Backup, there we go. There we go. That looks good. Last backed up on 320. Hyper backup. There we go. We are all set. So yeah, this is completed. Uh, there are no further steps. So once you once you launch, that is it. I do need to do a manual update for 7.1.1 update 4, which will be the next video, just the final video of updating from 7.1.1 to 7. 711 update 1 to 711 update 4. Yes, 711 update 4. Okay. Uh, but with that, again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, feel free to ask away. And I appreciate uh, any feedback. Awesome. Thanks, guys.